Sony LEDs, they're the latest evolution of LED backlit LCD TVs and the 8 series from TCL is the first TV to have a mini LED backlight. Now I am so excited for the chance to play with this TV but before I can do that I have to unbox and set it up. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover and on this channel we bring you the tech of entertainment so we do unboxings, demos, comparisons and real world reviews of the tech that entertains you like TVs like this so you can find the best devices and get the most out of them so if you're into that then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride now as I said in the intro, I've been excited about getting this TV in so I can check it out in person for a long time. If you're not aware, mini LEDs are the newest form of LED backlit LCD TV. And this TV doesn't only have a mini LED backlight, but it also has quantum dots for color reproduction, so it's pretty stacked. Now you may have seen my mini LED versus OLED comparison, and if you have, I bet you're wondering if I can time travel. Yes, I can. I hate when he does that. What are you doing here? So dramatic. It's not your time yet. Go away. Fine. Be that way. Anyways. Now this TV comes in 65 and 75 inch screen sizes and this is no doubt the biggest box I've ever seen a 65 inch TV come in. It's not only tall, but thick. Yeah, it's all the way chunky. But that doesn't matter. Let's dig inside and see what's in there. Always first up is the unpacking instructions but again that's why I'm here so you don't need it. Next up we have a piece of the stand and another piece of the stand. This one heavier than the one before it. And lastly a box with accessories. The Roku remote, power cable, composite adapter and screws for the feet and batteries too of course. Now we can get rid of all the styrofoam. Even though there's styrofoam between the screen and the actual box itself, they still provided this extra piece of cardboard to add as some extra form of rigidity and protection for the screen, which is pretty good. So finally there are six clips to remove so we can lift the box off. Look at all my stuff. I told you this box was big, I was not joking. So this final piece of styrofoam on the front is what TCL provides to aid you with lifting the TV out of the box. So before I even start lifting, I need to prepare my flat surface. So normally to have a flat enough surface to actually assemble the stand, I take the styrofoam that comes in the box and put it inside the empty box to reinforce it and that would be my flat surface. But because the box that this came with does not have the side pieces to help me do that, I can't do it in this case. So we're gonna do something new. We're gonna just put this on the top of the table because this will protect the screen. So it's not as bad as it could be. As always, I have my lovely assistant. So let's go. Now you hold the styrofoam right here and then you lift. First thing you have to do is remove this plate because that actually hides where the stand is attached to the TV. You must first mount the trim or attach the trim to the stand. So this is the trim and the brushed metal part actually faces outward and these two dimples actually line up with these cutouts here on the stand and then on the back side is where you screw in those three screws. And now that the trim is on, we can actually attach the stand itself to the TV. And done. The 8 series comes in a 65 inch and 75 inch screen size. It supports the major forms of HDR, HDR10, Dolby Vision and Hybrid Log Gamma like this video. It has TCL's quantum contrast technology with 25,000 mini LEDs grouped into 900 local dimming zones. 
It also has AIPQ for machine learning driven, smart upscaling and contrast management. It also runs the Roku Smart TV platform. All right, let's see what this setup is all about. All right, so first select language and location, home use, set up your wireless network after this. So it checks that it's on the wireless connection and that it's on the internet. And apparently the newest software or the newest firmware has really improved the performance of this TV. So let's definitely do that. So before you can even proceed, after you connect to your, your network, it will have you download the firmware, the newest firmware. So if you don't get this prompt, that means, it must mean you're on the latest firmware, but you'll likely get this prompt if you have the TV purchased anytime, you know, close to launch. So while the firmware is being installed, the TV, the flashing status light on the front of the TV blinks. When it's off, it normally stays solid. And once you install the firmware, it brings us right back to the beginning. Interesting. So if you want to use the smart features of this TV, then you have to activate it. And you do that by going to the website shown and using the code also shown. So once you get to the Roku site and enter your information, then it'll also ask you for payment information. So you either have a Roku account or you don't have one already. So if you don't have one, then you create it. But if you have one, all you do is sign in and then it brings you to the payment screen, which you can then go all the way down to skip. I'll add later. And then you can name your device. Yes, I do. And then you select your cable provider. Continue. Yes. This portion of it just determines what apps to pre-install on your TV. So Hulu, Netflix, Apple, Prime Video. We're getting everything over here. See, those are the main ones. So. You can choose whatever kind of TV you like watching. In my case, I'll say music. Let's do that. Then you can add all the music services you want, but you can scroll through and add whatever you desire, but I'll just continue from here. They have free trials of different programs, but I'll also continue from here because I don't need that. And that's it pretty much. Then it installs all the updates or apps that you selected during the setup process on your phone. That's a lot of things. Now comes the portion where if you have any HDMI devices connected, then you have them all powered on and ready to have the TV recognize them. So HDMI one is a cable box. There's nothing on HDMI 2, nothing on 3, and HDMI 4 has the ARC, the audio return channel. So that's where you would connect to your receiver. And that's where I have mine connected, and then nothing on the others. And once you select all those, then you're done. And then this is your final home screen. First impressions of this TV, it is bright and beautiful. It has great contrast, and the colors definitely definitely pop off the TV. This is all thanks to the mini LED backlight, of course, but the TV has a stand which is unnecessarily elaborate. I'm not a very big uh, fan of it, actually. It protrudes way too much out front, but on the bright side, it does keep the TV stable because it is heavy. It's actually the heaviest 65 inch TV I've ever lifted, but I'm guessing that's due to the cooling apparatus that's used to cool all those LEDs used for the backlight. But back to the picture, there are a bunch of settings you can change to enhance the picture to your liking. So going forward, I'll be creating a best picture settings video, which you can check out depending on when you're watching the video in the link up there. I'll also be comparing this TV with an OLED and a budget QLED to see how it performs on those different ends of the spectrum. 
It'll be just like the LG C9 versus Samsung Q90R QLED TV comparison I did earlier in the year. And if you, depending on when you're watching this, it'll be linked in the card up there. But yeah, that'll be both for movie watching and for gaming. So those comparisons are definitely on the way. So make sure to stick around for that. And remember, if you like my videos and like comparisons like this, then subscribing to the channel and helping it grow actually helps me to create more content like this. So you should definitely subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And in the spirit of growth, then you should also check out the merch store where we have gaming and home theater t-shirts like this and more and mugs too, in case you want something like that. But Buying stuff from the merch store actually helps to support the channel so we can get TVs like this and just grow the channel overall. So thank you for your support. Also, I've left links in the description where you can buy this TV and any other TV that I've reviewed this year. Don't forget to like the video if you liked the video and thank you for watching. Until next time, this has been your friend in Neighborhood Villa Man saying, peace.